one of the common questions that I am asked is I'll get a call from a potential client who's having a serious problem with discrimination or harassment at work, and they're still working there. This may be something that you're familiar with. Obviously, you've heard of somebody who's gotten fired, hired an attorney to challenge their termination. But a lot more commonly, people are facing discrimination or harassment at work. They don't want to lose their job, but they obviously want the discrimination or harassment to stop, and they want to know how. So I just have some general tips, about seven of them. These might not all be applicable to you, and there might be other things that you would need to do, but here's just some general tips if you're facing discrimination or harassment at work and you're still employed there that you can take to maybe at least make a paper trail of your experience. First, let me start with an example. Let's say Mary is an associate at the O'Malley Smith Law Firm. She loves her job, but she's in a small town and this is the only law firm in that town that does the kind of work that she does. She recently moved her family to town, her kids are adjusted in school. Bottom line, she needs this job. But O'Malley, who's the partner she works for frequently, constantly makes degrading comments about women. He won't give her case assignments. He'll say things like, oh, I can't give this case to a woman. She might get too emotional about it. She knows this is unlawful treatment, but she doesn't know what to do about it. Obviously, O'Malley's name is on the law firm letterhead. She knows he's too powerful to actually get fired, but she also understands that what he's doing to her is unlawful. How can she stop the discrimination without risking her job? Well, the bad news is she can't, not without risking her job. But oftentimes people are in a situation where the discrimination or harassment is so bad, they're willing to risk their job if they have to. Here's the first tip. Don't quit. Well, at least understand that if you do quit, it might be very difficult for you to ever seek justice from your employment situation. The reason is because in an employment case, the primary form of damages is the lost wages that you've experienced because of your employer's unlawful treatment. If they fire you, of course, you're not getting a paycheck for two, three, four, five, six months, sometimes a couple of years. If you quit, you're also not getting a paycheck, except it's your fault that you're not getting a paycheck, and the law typically doesn't allow any recovery in that situation. Now, there is a theory called constructive discharge, and you may have heard of this. People will often call me and say, the situation was so horrible at work, I had to quit. And I know it can feel that way, but the reality is the law only recognizes that theory if the workplace is truly, in a very objective way, uninhabitable. Any person in a reasonable state of mind would quit that work. It essentially says, look, they made it so horrible for me that I basically had to quit. I just want you to understand that if you do decide to quit, you may be effectively forfeiting the claims that you might have had against your employer. So if it's possible, if your safety is not at issue, I would encourage you to hang on and maybe follow these other steps before you might quit or before you're terminated. Step number two. Review written complaints that you've made. Now, I often talk with clients who say, I complain multiple times about this situation. And then I actually have the client send me those complaints and me looking at them objectively, I see that there's a lot of hedging in their complaints. They might say something that, you know, this is okay for right now, but it's really starting to bother me. Or they might put a lot of fluff around their complaints that actually makes it not a very strong complaint. So I would review the written complaints that you've made. And again, I emphasize written because just remembering what you said, I guarantee you somebody else is going to remember that conversation very differently. So review the written complaints that you've made. Now, I don't mean written in the sense of a formal pink slip at work. An email could be a written complaint. A text message could be a written complaint. A voicemail could be a written complaint but just review everything that you've actually done to complain to make sure that from an objective observer standpoint, you have been absolutely crystal clear what happened, who was involved, and that this behavior is absolutely unacceptable to you. And if you look at your complaints and you realize, look, I've put a lot of fluff around my complaints, I haven't actually been crystal clear, then make another one. Make another complaint that, and it may feel confrontational or make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but be absolutely clear what happened, who was involved, and that you find it absolutely unacceptable. That would be critical later on to establish that you indeed made a complaint, that you put your employer on notice that certain activity was taking place. Request your personnel records. If you're a worker in Oregon, 
your employer is required to give you a certified copy of your personnel records within 45 days of your request. I find personnel records to be really helpful if an employee is looking into whether or not their termination was unlawful. The reason is because inside your personnel file, they may have started to document if you were late or any performance issues you had. They may not even have talked to you about these issues, but they might have stuck those in your personnel file. It's important to know what's your employer going to say. Do they have documented proof that you are frequently late or that you had been written up for subordination multiple times? If they have documented evidence of these activities, those should be in your personnel records. It's really simple to request your personnel records. There's no magic words that you have to use. If you look on our website at hkm.com portland, we have a sample personnel records request letter that you could literally copy and paste and then just fill in the information. But again, there's no magic language. You can just say, dear boss, please send me my personnel records within 45 days. Sincerely, Jim. It's that simple. Step number four, confer safely with coworkers. Now, of course, this only goes for if you trust your coworkers, if maybe you have some friends at work, but I would confer with them. Let them know what's happening, how you see the situation, and just be on notice for the fact that if a number of other coworkers that you trust see the situation really differently than you, then you might want to take a step back and reevaluate and make sure that maybe your own biases or your own frustrations aren't getting in the way. Of course, if your coworkers do agree with you and agree that the treatment that you're complaining about is occurring, then that adds credibility to your account and maybe later on, if you ever need to make a complaint either to an agency or in a lawsuit, you would have a better chance of proving your claim if you have witnesses who are coworkers who saw that activity take place. Step number five, Continue to document any instances of discrimination or harassment. Now again, by document, don't think the Declaration of Independence or something really formal. Just making a note to yourself on a pad of paper or in a legal pad, sending an email to yourself, making a note in your phone or another electronic device. Just something where you can actually document on December 4th, O'Malley once again didn't give me a case because he told me that women shouldn't handle this kind of case because it will make them too emotional. If you can also document any surrounding circumstances, that is helpful. For example, with the story that we're working with here about the O'Malley law firm, if the plaintiff was in the lunchroom, for example, and O'Malley came in and made a comment, she might want to write down, I was in the lunchroom at noon, I was watching the Duke versus University of Nevada game, Bob and Jenny were also sitting there with me, and O'Malley said, and then write down what he said. The reason it can be helpful is you might need to be recounting these details six months, a year, or even two years later. And while you might have written it down, it might not be as readily memorable to somebody else who was involved. But if you can provide a lot of the surrounding circumstances, it might help somebody else refresh their memory. Step number six, make a final written complaint to somebody with the most authority. If maybe you've been complaining only to your supervisor, maybe now go to HR, somebody with a higher sense of authority. Or if you've only been complaining to a direct supervisor, maybe it's time to make a formal written complaint to a district supervisor or somebody with more authority. And again, this is written, but not in the sense of a formal complaint, an email, a text message, something that just commits it to actual permanent form is sufficient. Make sure that again, that you're absolutely clear what happened, who's involved, and that you find the activity totally unacceptable. And finally, step seven, if you've done all of these steps for a number of time and nothing seems to be changing, it might be time to take your complaint outside of your workplace. If you live in Oregon or Washington, you actually have an agency that's tasked with receiving complaints from employees to make sure that none of their civil rights are being violated in the workplace. In Oregon, this is called the Bureau of Labor and Industries. In Washington, it's called the Washington State Human Rights Commission. And you can make a complaint there for free without an attorney. And that will go on record that you complained and that you went beyond your employer to try and stop the discrimination or harassment. We're always available to evaluate your case to see if the activity that you're complaining about was truly unlawful. And we may be able to help you take that to the next step. The bottom line is, 
you really can't rock the boat without risking that the captain might throw you overboard. So the truth is, while your rights are protected when you're a complaining employee, sometimes people will find other reasons to fire you. They'll start documenting your performance in a way that you've never experienced. They might start criticizing your performance for things that you've never been criticized for before. Keep track of these things because it's not uncommon if an employee is complaining about a manager, particularly a powerful manager, for them to start papering your file so they feel like they have an excuse to fire you when the real reason they want to get rid of you is because you're complaining about activity from a manager. So keep all of your documentation and if you do come and see us, we'll obviously investigate to look past their complaints about you to find out the real reason they terminate you is because you complained about unlawful activity.